Okay, we're back here live at the OpenStack Enterprise Forum, OE Forum is the hashtag. Go to crowdchat.net slash OE Forum. We're opening up a public timeline across all the social networks, our new CrowdChat beta preview. We're going to leave it open. We already have 2.2 million timelines reached and over 200 comments. So go there, comment, thread. It's uh, like a Reddit for social. Um, and we're taking all community comments. This is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, and our next guest is Raj Dutz, SVP of Technology at Internap. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, thanks for having me, John. So packed house here physically at the event in, uh, in Mountain View, Silicon Valley. Online, a lot of activity on Twitter. Enterprise is hot, that's where the action is, and people want to know why. And finally, the guy raises his hand in the middle of the panel and says, I've been here two hours, someone explain to me what is OpenStack <laughs> and the enterprise breaking out really mean? I think you gave the, the most candid answer, so why don't you tell the folks out there, what is OpenStack really mean in the enterprise? So to, mean, it's, to me, it means a realization that, look, it's 2014, open source is going to win, open standards are going to win, VMware is a dinosaur, and uh, you know, you're going to see a massive commoditization, and OpenStack is the vehicle that the community and the, the global development community is going to be able to knock off billions of dollars off of market cap off VMware. And uh, you know, I don't mean to be provocative about it, but we really believe that open source will win. So Mark uh, McCauley online said the following, what happens when we commoditize apps running on open commoditized hardware and open commoditized OS and lock, unlocked open commoditized endpoints? Question, how do we make money putting ourselves out of business? Of course, I had a comment, but I want to get your take. What's the answer to, what's your answer to him? So my answer to that, I guess, is look, you can commoditize your way all the way down the stack, right? From cloud orchestration to the hardware, to the data center, to the network, to the fiber in the ground, to the way that you route bits on the internet. But at the end of the day, you know, companies can still differentiate on the value proposition of their application. I don't think that's ever going to get commoditized. And as an application developer, you want to be able to focus on you know, making your app awesome without worrying about all this auxiliary stuff. So your comment about VMware being a dinosaur, presumably, um uh, you're, you're talking about uh, it, it going away at some point, you know, getting disrupted at some point, but of course dinosaurs stayed around for many, 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 many years. Sure. So you, you would agree, I presume, that it's very functional, right? And there's oh, a lot yeah. of stuff out there. Don't so get me wrong, VMware is a, is a fantastic, very stable product. They've uh, you know, made their name in terms of enabling the enterprise, but that was the first wave. We're now in the second wave. So, so but your point about being a dinosaur is that because it's, it's not open source, right? That's the, you're talking about from a business model standpoint, correct? I just wanted to Yeah, clarify. no, fundamentally, the yeah. fact that they're not open source is a huge disadvantage. Yeah, so now, of course, they'll play the game, right? Pieces are open source. Oh, hey, you can have our you know, SDN. Or, sure. or, you know, so, uh, you know, the NICERA piece, because sure. nobody's buying it anyway, so we're going <laughs> to put it into the open source <laughs> Smart move, though. Like, right. Pat Gelsinger is uh, no fool. Yeah. Uh, and so the, the trick for them is to try to stay ahead functionally, right. and the trick for OpenStack is to try to close that gap as sure. fast as possible. So what's your prognosis for that? My prognosis is, uh, while I have a lot of respect for VMware, I just don't see how they can overcome this huge tidal wave that is a global open source collaborative effort. I mean, it's happened again and again, whether you want to look at Linux, you want to look at Apache, the same story is going to play out here. And uh, you know, I think that they can reorient themselves to stay relevant, but th at the end of the day, they've been a huge enabler in server consolidation. They have done almost nothing in terms of agility. So, you know, server consolidation, um, you know, enterprises have servers running at 20% capacity. You know, I, I'm going to consolidate a heterogeneous environment. But you tell me, yeah. what public cloud is running VMware at scale? What, what, what internet-centric well, company is doing let's that? Let's drill down. That scale is a big gap for those guys, well, and they don't have it right Well, this now. is the point. He brings up a good point. The server yeah, consolidation works great in a down market. You want to cut costs. Now we're in a growth market. Right. Some say bubble. But, I, you know, it's obviously growth. New apps, connected endpoints, all that stuff. Okay, growth market. Okay, hyperscale. The hyperscale guys are kick-ass dudes. Yeah. They're eating glass, spitting out nails. Yeah. Good on enterprise, they've been consolidated down to, I'm the DBM, the storage admin. 
Sure, okay. and the enterprises now you, are now doing... You're gonna, now you're going to be an agile DevOps guy? Uh, not really. So cloud ops seems to be the kind of halfway point, halfway house, sure. kind of the recovery zone for wannabe well, DevOps what, guys. But isn't that what Pivotal is all about? I mean, you know, think about Tucci for a minute, right? EMC is I mean, spinning off Pivotal. Kind of an interesting move, But that's right? PowerPoint. More, more open source mojo, right? Sure, yeah, but well, it's, it's, it's one level removed from you know, what we're talking about here from a cloud orchestration yeah, standpoint. Yeah, really it's really a more pass auxiliary. Yeah. yeah, sure. Now, I, I, this is a great segment, so staying on the controversial comments, Randy Bias said in <laughs> now he's the, a controversial the, crowd, guy. the crowd chat, he said there's, <laughs> no place, said there's no place for OpenStack in the public cloud. 80% uh, you know, of the deployments are private cloud. There's no place in the public cloud. I presume you disagree with that. Yeah, Why? No, we, we Why? Why? What, disagree. what gives you confidence that he's wrong? Look, okay, so Amazon's the 800 pound gor gorilla, right? So what is, but it's still early days in this whole transition, right? People act like it's game over. I'm of the opinion that the game's just beginning. So OpenStack is the main answer that any new player or up and coming player has to defend against Amazon. Look at the, the very history of the project. OpenStack exists because it was a defensive move by Rackspace acknowledging that they were going to have a very difficult time catching up with Amazon. And hiring people that had core competencies. So exactly. I buy that, I buy that, but that's a sell side view. What okay, about the customer enough. view? Can the you, customer can you... view, okay, I will be the first person to admit that today's customers don't necessarily care that they are using an OpenStack public cloud. That's not, a, that's not part of their buying decision. But give it a few years, interoperability is going to start to matter, portability is going to start to matter. We're still in early days. Once that starts to happen, I think people, customers, end yeah. users are going to start demanding OpenStack in the same way they demanded Linux, Apache, so on and so forth. I mean, forth. you would think that the days of the, the de jure standard are, are dead, but here's Amazon with the, you Dave, know, the hey, look, look, look at what look at what Chris Kemp said at this conference. I thought it was a very yeah, yeah, statement about the, uh, that Amazon would eventually end up supporting the OpenStack And I tweeted API. it, I thought it was tongue in cheek, yeah. but he's going to come on, so we're going to have to <laughs> ask yeah, him. But Dave, here's the thing, we start Open Compute this week. Oh, building large public clouds is freaking difficult. Even Amazon and Facebook with, that's why they went yeah, open compute, right? So it is really freaking hard. But that's why I tweeted out. I said so, I think eventually that that the OpenStack is going to be very appealing to public cloud supply, uh, uh, providers. Hold on, hold on. Let me finish my thoughts. Okay, that's a given. We, we talked about that. I don't think we need to argue that. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. really freaking hard. You know that. But now enterprises want hyperscale, so their demand is for hyperscale. But can they operate? So the question is, whoever can put hyperscale into a simplistic package with automation? I think that's where I see OpenStack. Um, and that's why I think it's hard to do bolt to public cloud. Well, that's the opportunity and the challenge right now. Well, that's why saying. Amazon told us that they don't go open compute because quite frankly, they're already doing all this and open compute does this. So as public cloud yeah. providers, they got custom, basically it's a custom project. Yeah, look, yeah, every at, time. At, at the end of the day, servers are servers. Everyone's using the same x86 commodity server. It doesn't matter whether you're getting a Dell, NHP, Quanta, open compute, non-open com open compute, super micro. The price difference is actually very, very, I mean, across all vendors, it's commoditizing. And as a public cloud provider, do we really care if we're using Dell or HP or super micro? It's a supply chain compute? issue. It's really a supply chain sure, issue, right? It's yeah. optimizing for the supply and chain. It's about, it's about sharing, sharing the, the institutional knowledge that has been gathered at the hardware level, at the data center build level, yeah. just like at the software level, right? It's a realization that, hey, yeah. everyone's solving the same problem over and over again, and let's share what we're doing in server design and data center design. Right, right. People right. Who need but again, support, at scale, people, that means billions in a supply right, chain. People who need support, uh, Dave, will, are not going to call Facebook for OCP. They have to do it themselves. The people who build their own clouds have to basically say, hey, I'm well, going to optimize for cost effectiveness and scale. OCP needs Meaning, solutions. I'm, we talked about that. All right, Raj, I have to ask you some, another question. I'm sorry about the rapid fire approach here. We no usually, worries. We usually like to savor the cube, but we're under the gun here. You well, explain why bare metal is cheaper. It's it's somewhat non-intuitive to me. You would sure. think if I'm sharing the infrastructure, shouldn't it, it be less expensive? Right. Explain what you meant. So, okay, look. At the end of the day, I have a server. I cut it up into 20 p uh, 20 pieces and virtualize it. Um, I'm, my total revenue for that server as a service provider is going to be better than what I'm going to get if I just sell it as a dedicated server, right? So there's a margin question here, um, right. right? So, I mean, at the end of the day, would I rather as an app sell 100% um, virtualized servers? Sure. But you know what? Look at companies like Software, Rackspace, whoever yep. you want to look at. They've built entire, you know, they've built their entire business on bare metal. And how else are you going to ensure to a customer that they're not going to have a noisy neighbor, they're, not, they're going to have no co-tenancy issues, they're going to have fast access to local storage. I don't know any other way to do it. So this is the debate that we've had with, with Amazon, and you know, you kind of have a debate with Jan Andy Jassy, but it's hard to debate Andy Jassy. But at any rate, that apples to apples, it's more expensive. To, to, uh, to, to, to use a, a multi-tenant approach than it is to do bare metal because of the complexity. 
I think um, you're looking at a margin difference between the two, the two worlds. Yeah, oh, so from a supply standpoint, again, the margin's great, right. like you said, from a supplier standpoint. But, but, but in fact, even from a customer standpoint, to build an apples to apples, true enterprise infrastructure on the public cloud with all the security, compliance, everything else, is more expensive. It's right. always been our premise. I think right. that's what you're saying, right? Well, we are, but at the end of the day, look, bare metal is not that different. I mean, at the end of the day, you're providing a server compute capacity to the customer. Does that customer really care whether it's bare metal or virtualized? No. If it's provided over an no. API, it's elastic, they can throw it well, away the when they're done. The customer prefer it's bare metal, I would Sure, presume. and so that's what we found. We found we have had many, many customers who've come from Amazon, they get to a certain dollar amount spend, and then they realize that it's getting out of control. They're on the wrong side of the cost curve, and they, you know, they get to the point where they can basically reboot their whole application on bare metal, save money, and get better performance. But rental is almost always more expensive than, than owning, so assuming we, we, you can utilize the... Fair enough, which right. is why we offer co-location. So, and in okay. spite of what people say, co-location <laughs> is not dead and is a valid offering for many, many well, companies. Well, sure, right, absolutely. Good okay, stuff. Raj, well, hey, <laughs> great to have you on theCUBE. We definitely want to get you on our, uh, on our Rolodex list because uh, we've got a lot of content there in a hot area. Um, hybrid oh. and... Oh, before you let them go, I, I, one more question, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, so I wanted to ask you about quality of service. Are you able to monetize quality of service on the storage side, the, the, the elastic block storage analog in your world? We're starting to. Yeah. Um, t today, we're not as effective as we'd like in monetizing it, but in our next generation cloud, which is currently in beta and goes into deployment at the first half of this year, we will absolutely monetize and bill on metrics like IOPS, megabits per second, allow our customers to build an exact profile of what they need for their storage. I mean, it's early days. I really don't see anybody doing that you know, in a sophisticated way, but, I the, think it's but cloud the technology's 2. here. It's, yeah. it's, it's solving the problems that have existed. Performance without compromise. All right, thank you, John. Thank you. Okay, no, thanks a lot, guys. Great content, I wish we had more time. Normally we like to do them a little bit, a little bit longer, but we're under a tight window here. Uh, Raj, thanks for coming on theCUBE. You're really a tech appreciate athlete. The time. Love, the, love the action. This is theCUBE, be right back with our next guest after this short break. I'm John with Dave here inside the OpenStack Enterprise Forum, crowdchat.net slash OE Forum, open chat across all networks. Go there for the public timeline. <laughs>